Call me Ishmael. Whenever it is a dark, drizzly November in my soul, and it requires a strong moral principle to prevent me from stepping into the streets and methodically knocking people's hats off, I account it high time to get to see as soon as I can. Wherefore it is, I should take it into my head to go on a whaling voyage. Doubtless it forms part of the grand program of Providence that was drawn up a long time ago. Hey, can you see me? I am a lab. Chief among my motives is the great whale himself. Such a portentous and mysterious monster rouses all my curiosity and sways me to my wish. I stuff a shirt or two into my old carpet bag, tuck it under my arm, and start for Nantucket. night, bitingly cold. I know no one in the place. Not far from the docks, I come upon an outhanging light and a sign over a door. Good evening. Do you perchance have a room available for the night? Alas, my house is full, not a bed unoccupied. But you ain't got no objections to sharing a harpooner's blanket, have ye? I suppose you are going a whaling, so you'd better get used to that sort of thing. I never like to sleep too in a bed, but rather than wander about a strange town on so bitter a night, I reckon I'll put up with half of any decent man's blanket. Come on, I'll show you to your room. He'll be here afore long. He's a decent enough chap and pays regular. Make yourself comfortable. Good night to ye. Good morning, Mrs. Wallace. I am Miss Stokes, the head matron. Please. I have a daughter. She's eight years old. You are sick. No, no, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Please, let me talk to a doctor. You need to stop the dramatics. This institution respects obedient women who participate in treatment. Those are the women who have daughters. Hey. 
You've made a mess of your breakfast. You'll have to go hungry. Cheer up. This is a place of healing. Oh. Thank you, Clyde. You have a pleasant day at the madhouse, doctor. How many times must I tell you, Clyde? We must call it a hospital. Welcome to the snake pit. I don't belong here. Neither do I, dearie. I'm old and an inconvenience, but I ain't mad. Yeah, let's do it! Fuck! Shit! You shut your filthy mouth! Fuck! The board is waiting. Yes. How do I look? Marvelous. Is the chairman there? Of course he is. Do you remember your speech? Uh, Moby Dick. Melville's masterwork of obsession. Madness. And madness upon the sea. It is this story, gentlemen, that I propose to bring to life here with our patients playing the roles. <laughs> a play, a theatrical production. A technique pioneered by Dr. Jacoby at Double Hill and used with great success. <laughs> the theater provides a means of self-exploration and self-knowledge is that not what we strive to provide for our patients? Preposterous. We are here to treat these poor souls, not to set them prancing about like chimpanzees. Oars and harpoons in the hands of lunatics. Insane. We'll give them prop weapons, of course. Dr. Calhoun, I agreed to employ you here as a favor to your father, who assured me that your perverse fascination with the theater was behind you. And yet you... <laughs> Sit here before us asking to put on the play. Therapy. I confess my love for the theater is unabated. <laughs> but I come to you now as a man of medicine. My only concern is the welfare of my patients. I realize I am new here, but I've been around long enough to recognize that the old methods, isolation, ice therapy, leeches, they do not work. Well, we could try it on the female inmates. They may be more docile. Women? Gentlemen, all of the rogues in Moby Dick are for men. <laughs> Who gives a damn? It's women or nothing. Benjamin? Hmm. I think a play is a fine idea. They mean to discourage you. They shan't. Let's begin casting. Ah, Bernadette. Bernadette, take your time, and then whenever you're ready, begin. Call me Ishmael whenever it is ademptorously November. Wonderful, Bernadette. Thank you. 
Ah, Frida, yes. Take your time, okay? Call me. Ishmael. I can't read. Kara! 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 Wait! Be gentle with her! Be gentle! Easy. Come here. Let me see it. I just want to see it. Maybe we should take a break. Perhaps she could be our quick quick? I don't know. Quick quick is called a savage, but he's really one of the more intelligent. Trust me on this, Matron. I'm sorry. I don't think I know you. Yes, you. Do you read? Call me Ishmael. Whenever it is a damp, drizzly November in my soul, and it requires a strong moral principle to prevent me from stepping into the street and methodically knocking people's hats off, then I count it high time to get to see as soon as I can. You are new, Miss... Mrs. Wallace. Isabel Wallace. She was committed last night by her husband, a minister. Well, Mrs. Wallace, I am Dr. Benjamin Calhoun. Welcome. Isn't it exciting? I've always wanted to be an actress. Is it always like this? We get a bit of sugar on Sundays. Sometimes. Not hungry, Mrs. Wallace? Farm animals eat better. You should be thankful you get anything at all. Thank you. Dr. Calhoun wants to see you. <laughs> so, I have some exciting news. I have cast you in the role of Ishmael. Have you acted before? I led the church choir. Well, splendid. But perhaps your uh, experiences there will aid us in... I'm not mad. Well, let's see. I have your file right here. Uh, Isabel Wallace, uh, committed at the request of Reverend Tobias Wallace. For the, uh, no, Mrs. Wallace. Good heavens. This is the work of my husband. He's an angry, wrathful man. Now, there must be something to prove my sanity. Some kind of test. You have been found insane, committed by the authorities. Oh, what if I wrote letters? Um, I have friends at the Lady Society at my church who can intercede. Mrs. Wallace, it is I have a daughter. She's eight years old, and she's alone with him. Please. There must be something you can do. Yes. I will make inquiries. I don't think that you can improve your situation by batting your eyes at the doctors, Mrs. Wallace. We'll soon learn who's really in charge. Can I climb in with you? so cold, I can't even feel my own body. <laughs> Isabel, come, lie with me. 
feel that well tonight. You will fulfill your wifely duty. Okay, this is the part where Ishmael meets Quick Quick. There is a heavy footfall in the passage. Holding a lantern, a tall, dark figure enters the room. Kara, you are Quick Quick. <coughs> that is your cue. Enter. Good. Uh, what a sight. Such a face. Dark and tattooed in squares. His hair tied up in a scalp knot will get you makeup later. Uh, a strange object dangles from his hand. Uh, matron, if you can get Kara a prop, please. Let's do that. Uh, it is a shrunken human head. Give it. Quee quick extinguishes the light and springs into bed. Uh, you spring into bed. No. Uh, okay, okay, Kara, Kara. Uh, uh, not so rough. You wanna, you wanna see who she is? Very gentle. Ah! Okay, okay. Um, Kara, let's. Uh, I, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um, get up. Thank you. Good, good. I'm, I'm going to grab this from you. I'll give it back. All right. So to bed, and I'm going. To... Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm fine. Yes. Very well. <laughs> Well, this is make-believe, ladies. Okay, um... Uh, who the devil are you? Speaker. Tell it. Who the me? Angel, save me! Landlord, you did not tell me my bedmate was a savage. Huh. Quick quag wouldn't harm a hair of your head. That's a shrunken head? He brought a lot of embalmed heads from the South Seas. As curios, you know. Quick quag. Yeah. This man, sleepy. <laughs> you, you sabby. We sabby plenty. You get it out. Um, thank you, landlord. You may go. Uh. Yes, uh, so, uh, at that moment, uh, you will get into bed with Kara. Kara, get, get in bed. You will get in bed next to Ishmael. Okay. Well, I think we're making real progress. Oh. Dr. Calhoun, I can rehearse with her. That would be lovely. Thank you, Isabel. They took her beautiful clothes away and dressed her in an old gray smock. Just look at the proud princess now. They laughed as they led her into the kitchen. <clears throat> Let's get to bed. Okay, hmm? I'll read you some more tomorrow. All right, darling. Sleep well. Sweet dreams, okay? I love you. Love you. Why is she awake? It's my fault I lost track of time. Let's get to bed. How are things proceeding with Kara? Quite well. Good. No, don't do that. Ah, it's a feature of her condition. She devours all sorts of awful things. Kara, look at your mouth. You're a mess. Come on, sit. Sit. Come. Come sit. All right, why don't we face each other here? Are you ready to play the scene for Dr. Calhoun? We'll play the scene where we become friends. Remember your shaving with the harpoon? Queequeg is a comely looking cannibal. I find myself mysteriously drawn to him. I see a lofty bearing, a simple, honest heart, and in his dark eyes, a spirit that would dare a thousand devils. 
Queequeg, what say you to a social smoke? Oh, um, use my pipe. <clears throat> Here. <gasps> we are now bosom friends and resolve to ship aboard the same vessel. <laughs> Brava. Quite good. Quite good. She's come so far. Mm -hmm. She's a really sweet girl mm. and eager to please once she knows what's expected of her. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, Isabel, um, I was giving your situation a great deal of thought and if you pen a letter to the Ladies' Society, I'll do my best to see it delivered. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaufman. No, no! Cara, don't eat the goldfish! The anchor is up, the sail is set, and the short northern day merges into night as we blindly plunge like fate into the lone Atlantic. Our captain's name is Ahab, He's lost his leg to a whale in his previous voyage. For several days, no sign has been seen of him above hatches. He stays in his cabin. What's the way he raised his tail? What's the way? Mary, louder, please. I can barely hear you. Patrick and John! It's a bit too loud. Why don't we try for a happy medium? <laughs> Mary, show some respect. She'd do that. It's not your fault, Matron. But I am beginning to despair. Without an Ahab, we have no play. Well, there is one other possibility. Hey. Why the devil didn't you tell me? She's considered dangerous. I thought you said her last incident was a year ago. Because she's been in isolation since. She nearly bit off a nurse's finger. Then they left her with gloves. Surprise. I am Dr. Calhoun. I'm here to inform you of a new therapy of my design. I saw you at Edward Fry's opera house. As Lady Macbeth, you mesmerized me. We're doing a play. Melville's Moby Dick. I want you to be my Ahab. Mm. Goodbye, Miss Pratt. Beatrice Price, have you lost all sense? We have her in isolation for the reason she is violent, vicious. The misdeeds these women committed in former lives ought not weigh against them here. Beatrice Price is a murderess and a sexual deviant. Allowing her access to these women would be like loosing a fox in a hen house. I'll take full responsibility. I have no doubt my therapy will aid her. <sighs> Scene five. Miss Price, you are reading for the role of Captain Ahab. I'll be holding your script. I don't need a damn script. On such a day, one as sweet as this, I struck my first whale. A boy harpooner of 18, 
40 years ago. 40 years of constant wailing. 40 years of privation, peril. Storm time on the pitiless seas. For 40 years has Ahab forsaken peaceful land to make war on the horrors of the deep. Then the madness, the frenzy, the boiling blood and the smoking brow with which for a thousand lowerings has Ahab furiously and foamingly chased his prey more demon than man. I, what a forty years fool has all day had been. Bravo. Bravo. Oh. I hope for your sake you can control her. If there's a slip up, I'll have you fired. At last, Ahab stands before us with the crucifixion in his face. A grand, ungodly, godlike man. He lives in this world as the last grizzly bears live in settled Missouri. His grim aspect affects me powerfully, as is the barbaric white leg in which he stands. What do ye do when ye see a whale? See out for him! And what do ye next? Go away and after him! And what song do ye pull to? A dead whale or a stone boat! Do ye see this Spanish ounce of gold, men? I got him! Oh my, she is quite good. Yes! I insist that she be in the play. A wrinkled brow, a crooked jaw, and three holes in the starboard fluke. He shall have this gold doubloon. No! Captain Ahab, is this white well the one they call Moby Dick? Aye, twas Moby Dick that dismasted me, sliced off my leg like a mower reaps a blade of grass in the field. This is what ye ship for, men to chase Moby Dick over all sides of the earth until the white whale spouts black blood. Ye harpooners, flank me with your lances. Cross them here before me. Death to Moby Dick! Death to Moby Dick! God hunt us all, but we do not hunt him till his death. Relief being out of that straitjacket. Such a bother not being able to scratch your nose or reach the important bits. Mind if I borrow some thread? <coughs> some thread, I said. Much obliged. You're a quiet little mouse. Married to a minister, they tell me. Now how does a minister's wife end up in an ungodly place like this? You'd have to ask my husband. Oh, and what story would he tell, a cold bed? Quiet little church mouse like you, an iceberg has better chance of pleasing a husband. Is there anything moving under the sea, or is it frozen down there as well? Every minister I ever met had a horny pecker. They just wrap a white collar around it. I could teach you about passion. Thaw the iceberg, as it were. Get off of me! 
You foul woman. <laughs> Is that the best you've got? You're a whaler now, curse like one. Call me a bitch, a whore. Whore, bitch. That's the idea, fuck, cocksucker. Cocksucker, shit. Huh? That's Hot how sucker. sailors talk. Dick. What else do they bitch. have to do on those long ah. voyages? Whore. Hey, fuck. church mouse. Bitch. That's enough out of you two. The chief mate of the Pequod is Starbuck, a native of Nantucket, a staid, steadfast man. Why the long face, Starbuck? I am game for his crooked jaw, Captain, if it fairly comes in the way of our business. But I came to hunt whales, not my commander's, uh, not my What's commander's ranger said. Starbuck? You are pathetic. Okay. Not my commander's vengeance on a dumb brute that simply sees from blind instinct. Come on, Scylla. I can't work with this. Are we to believe this whelping thing is first mate of the Pequod? You will work with whoever Dr. Calhoun tells you to work. No, she's right. Ahab needs a Starbuck, a sea dog. But you see, Miss Price, I have a very limited talent pool here. What about her? She looks like she has balls. <laughs> no, no. Matron Stokes is not an actress, and she has a job to do. Let her finish the scene with me. I did some acting in school. I'm game. I am game for his crooked jaw, Captain, if it fairly come in the way of our business. But I came to hunt whales, Captain, not my commander's vengeance on a dumb brute that simply smote thee from blindest instinct. Dumb brute. He has left innumerable fatalities in his wake. I see in him not only outrageous strength, but intelligent, inscrutable malice. God keep us all. Let's keep going, keep going. Horrible old man. My soul is overmatched. Starbuck thinks me mad, but I am demonic. I am madness maddened. I plainly see my miserable office to obey, rebelling, and I must help him to his impious end. Ye great gods, come see if ye can swerve me. Ye cannot swerve me. My path to my fixed purpose is laid with iron rails whereon my soul is grooved to run. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. Yet there is hope. Time and the tide flow wide, and the hated whale has the round, watery globe to swim in. I like it. Are you willing, Matron? Anything I can do to help, Doctor. Boom! Ah! Prettying yourself up for your private rehearsal. You're pretty enough for me, Church Mouse. Let me through. Couldn't hurt your hopes of a release if you open your legs for him. He doesn't see me that way. Oh, my, 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 how cloistered you've been. Come, come, I promise to be good. I've seen the way he looks at you.
lick your lips. I'll rub them together. A bit less rune, don't you think? A bit. And Cinderella shall go to the ball. That's my daughter's favorite story. Mine too. I guess this makes me the fairy godmother. Came from far away, my dear, my dear. You came from far away, my dear, my dear. <clears throat> you... Isabel, <laughs> please sit. <laughs> Before we begin, uh, I'd like to tell you, uh, I sent your missive to Mrs. Van Dyke of the Ladies' Society and enclosed the letter to Rebecca. Thank you, Dr. Calhoun. I... I'd almost given up hope. Please, when it's just us, you can call me Benjamin. And it is I who should be thanking you. Your work here has been exemplary. It's been exhilarating. Oh, it is, isn't it? Blindly plunging like fate into the lone Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> my first love was always a theater. When I was a boy, my mother would say, Benjamin, you're going to be a thespian. She would take me to the theater every week. So I dropped out of medical school, much to my father's chagrin. <laughs> Became a doctor after all. Yes. Well, my mother, she took her own life. She was troubled, suffered from hysteria. So I was compelled to take up medical school again with a focus on lunacy. <laughs> but I feel trapped. I do. Just like you. It isn't the same. Oh, no. Of course not. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. Well, let's get to work. The whale hunt, I believe. <laughs> You're a good man. Benjamin. Ah. Here we are. From here. The boat tears on. The vast swells of the omnipotent sea. The surging hollow roar they make. Hmm. Without the screw. The brief suspended agony as the boat tips on the knife edge of the waves that threaten to cut us in two. The sudden profound dip. <laughs> the, the headlong sled-like slide down the other side. No raw recruit marching for the first time into the fever heat of his first battle has felt stronger emotions than the man who for the first time finds himself in the churned circle of the hunted sperm oh. whale. Bodies in motion. Bodies in motion. The devil fetch ye, you dogs. Pull, will ye? Long and strong. Keep rowing. Come on, ladies, we're on the boat. 
Keep rowing! Keep on going! Where's his hump? Aim for his eye! Give it to him! Of a sudden, a gush of scalding liquid shoots up. Something rolls like an earthquake beneath us. We are tossed into the coddling cream of the squall. It, 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 it. You're flailing in the ocean, ladies. The waves are washing over you. The waves are washing over you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a certain little glow. You've gone and done it, haven't you? You naughty little church mouse. You mustn't say a thing. <laughs> we should keep this between us. This morning. You're doing well, and you? Marvelous. Ahab ferociously studies his charts and plans his course. In the east, you will be my beast. That is where I shall wreak my revenge. That's your cue, Starbuck. The oil in the hold is leaking, so we must heave to and repair. And spend a week tinkering with old gaskets. But we could waste more oil in one day than we make good in a full year. What does Ahab care? On deck. Captain! Does thou dare contradict me? Nay, sir. I do but entreat thee. There is but one God that lords over the earth. And one captain that lords over the Pequod. On deck. Thou hast, outraged. thou hast outraged me, sir, and for that I ask thee not to beware of Starbuck, thou wouldst but laugh. But let Ahab beware of Ahab. Beware thyself, old man. Doctor! All right. Okay, keep going, keep the intensity. There is one God! Hey, Starbuck! Hey! Yeah! Yes! All right. Now, let it go. Beatrice, stop it once! All right, all right. Beatrice! All right. All right. Well, that certainly was visceral. You almost killed me. If I wanted to kill you, you would be dead. You said you wanted to be in the play, then be in the play. It seems to me what you really want is Calhoun's cock in your quim. But guess what? Ishmael beats you to it. That is enough nonsense out of you, beasts. Benjamin? Huh? What's going on between you and that Wallace woman? Absolutely nothing. What was Price talking about? Another attempt to needle you. Come now, Phoebe, you mustn't let her upset you. You know I would never consult with a patient. Phoebe, I need you on my side. Without you, this entire enterprise collapses. Are you with me? Of course I am. Oh, good. <laughs> you and me. Mm. Yes? <laughs> Cara! What the devil is she doing in here? No. Cara, no. No. I'm not telling you another thing. You announced it in front of everybody. I let my anger get the best of me. <gasps> Cara! <gasps> Cara! Spit it out, it's not food. Spit it. <gasps> Cara, Cara. Come here. Look at me. Give me your hands. Like we practice. Okay, everyone. 
There's a storm blowing, a storm blowing. You lied to me. What's that? This is not the time. I trusted you. Isabel, we have to be calm. You didn't send them and you promised Let's to help go. me. You promised to help me and discuss, I believed you. We can discuss this at another time. I need to see my daughter and this is going to get me to see my daughter. You this is going to help you daughter, I promise. All you care about is this absurd play. Stop you lied now. to me. You lied to me. You're delusional. I'm not delusional. I'm not. Sad. I don't belong here. Do you know that. I don't belong here. Give it to me. Give it. No. No. I love this. No, Matt, please! No, Matt! Let me go! Well, my daughter! Please! Quite a little hellcat, aren't we? Can you guess what I found? Tucked beneath a pillow. You're reading this to our daughter. This Cinderella. Bring me my cane. You bring this blasphemy into my house, a minister's house. For a minister's daughter. Your feet, dear wife. on, leaving such a furrow in the sea as when a plowshare. You will say it, one way or another. I hate that it's come to this. You've left me no choice. Say the lines, rejoin the cast. If you continue to defy me, I will be forced to... Say the lines, Isabel. Go to hell. <laughs> Nurse Helga, put Mrs. Wallace back in isolation. Soul, body, lungs, and life is Ahab bound. Damn me, thou actest right, Captain. My God, you only have a few lines, and you can't do better than that. You know, you begged me to be in this play, remember? I've told you a thousand times, cue pickup. Are you still foggy on what that means? No, sir. Then why am I left waiting for your lines to begin? Do you know what happens while you're gearing up for your cue? Hmm? The energy is dropping out of the performance! Stupid bitch! Shh! Say your lines. 
live in the game and die in it. He would have shot me once. I had her in the pan. Strange these hands have handled so many deadly lances yet. Now they shake. Shall this crazed old man be tamely suffered to drag, to drag a whole ship's company down to doom with him? There he is, sleeping. I but still alive and soon awake. Do you see what she's doing? Stay in the moment. He's supposed to be sleeping. I cannot withstand being that old man. But reasoning, but entreaty, what they'll happen to you. Fuck you, bitch! And I may have to hug my wife and child again. You stupid bitch! Great God, where art thou, shall I? Oh, Moby Dick! I have you in my clutches at last. All right. That was good, Matron, except for when you let her distract you. Hypocrite. You accuse me of being distracted, and then you work to distract me! All right. Matron. Beatrice Price. Benjamin Calhoun. Was that how you rehearsed at the Orpheum? We didn't have matrons or orderlies at the Orpheum. When there's a crowd, you know I'll perform. When there's a crowd, should I start directing when there's a crowd? Oh, no, by all means, start directing whenever you feel the urge. I direct. Lest you forget, we are in a loony bin, and your cast is comprised of mad women. You're a joke. The whole play's a joke. Benjamin? Hmm. I dare to hope, but I swear they're threatening to tear my heart out. Laudanum? Just a few drops to help me relax, Phoebe. That's all. Mm. I don't appreciate what you're doing. Hmm. Your experiment will change the study of lunacy forever. Where are you going? I am giving you a foot rub. When I was a little girl, and my daddy came home from the lumber yards, I'd give him a foot rub every night. So, something of an expert. But I don't need a foot rub. Oh, that's nice. What would I do without you? You're the only one I can rely on. You'd make do, I suppose. I try and try, and they subvert me at every turn. They mean to humiliate me. Hmm. Oh, my. You didn't do that for your father. I didn't do this either. Isabel? I've invited your husband to see you on opening night. To see the progress you have made. He'll never come here. On the contrary. Your situation is the talk of his congregation. He knows he cannot ignore it much longer, no. Bringing Rebecca. Look. 
She was traumatized by your arrest. I told him to see you on stage, happy, healthy, will set her mind at ease, help her move forward. Will you be my Ishmael again? All right, Isabel, whenever you're ready. My pagan companion and fast bosom friend, Queequeg, has been seized with a fever. Poor Queequeg. He quietly lays in his hammock. The rolling sea seems to be gently rocking him to his final rest. And awe sees Clara, it. stop that. You're supposed to be half dead. Go on. And awe seizes over me as I sit by this waning savage to the drawing near of death, which alike levels all. What is it you think we're doing here? Deirdre? Playing some sort of game? Dressing up like sailor men and pretending to chase a whale? You move like frightened women. Have none of you uh, called rope before? No? Let me show you. I want manly strength. You see that? Manly strength. I want manly strength, not girlish prancing. You see Let me see it again. Are you as stupid as you are crazy? Rodley, deal with her. Take her. I was watching the male patient on work detail the other day, hauling casks and crates. They moved with such easy strength, such innate virility. Oh. I see not a whit of that in our cast. You've been making a noble effort. Phoebe, price is good when she decides to be. But you cannot rid yourselves of your cursed femininity. Well, we are just women. Yes. Perhaps that's the problem. Putting men's blood in us. You pass me as a sea captain, and I'll give you a sea captain. 
You cast me as Ahab, and by God, a whole gig you may have without the benefit of his blood. <laughs> Is everything all right? Everything's fine. We lost a patient. No procedures without its risks. Matron Stokes, you will be receiving the blood treatment like the rest of the patients. What? If you want to be in my cast, you will behave like a man. Dr. Calhoun, you overstep. I am the head matron at this facility, not one of your patients, and I will not be receiving any sort of treatment. I am truly disappointed. I thought you were committed to this. But now I can see you're just as weak as them. Let's begin with a quick, quick scene, shall we? <laughs> All right, I realize that we've lost Kara. It's unfortunate. We will have to recast. All right, Mrs. Wallace, I have changed the dialogue for quick, quick to narration. Your treatment killed her. Come now, there's no connection. All right? She's prone to seizures. Where's Beatrice? She's not in this scene. Griselda, would you mind filling in for Kara for today? Let's get you in here. There you go. Queequeg told me it is the custom of his race to stretch out a dead warrior in a canoe and let him float away. He shudders at the thought of being buried in his hammock, as is the custom at sea. He recalls- Wait, please. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not feeling your sorrow, Isabel. You know, surely this is an opportunity for you to channel your feelings for Kara. You know, you're thinking too much. Don't think. Feel. 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 Carry on. He recalls that he has seen dead sailors in Nantucket laid to rest in canoes. He means coffins. And he desires one for himself. If I may, <laughs> you're watching your friend slowly waste away. How does it make you feel? Fear. Grief. Anger, there's something burning inside. Hmm? How much does it hurt? A lot. A lot. Show me a lot. <clears throat> the ship's carpenter took his 
measure, and went to work. Now the last nail has been driven. Queequeg entreats me lifted into his final bed, along with his harpoon. Are those tears? Ishmael is a man! You understand. Men do not show their grief in that manner. Blessed women, I mean, do we need another transfusion? Is that what we want? Do you want another transfusion? Huh? <laughs> show me some masculinity like Phoebe. That's what I need. Now, 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 some of you sailors will lift up Queequeg into this lovely coffin that I've had made. But for now, Brazella, let's get you in the coffin. Come on. I'd rather not. No, 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 it's okay. It's nonsense. This is just make-believe. There it is. Wonderful. Manly strength, manly strength. Go. Isabel, come down. Say your lines. Come down and say your lines. Queequeg is placed in the coffin. He lies without moving, his arms crossed over his out breast, here, here. while the coffin lid is placed over him. And the sails... Oh. Our Ahab has returned to us. Are you ready to return to the fold, Beatrice? Hmm? One condition. You get Edward Fry to attend, and I'll perform. I would love Edward Fry to come, but how do you expect me to do that? Just mention my name. Good evening, sir. My name is Dr. Benjamin Calhoun. I'd like to talk to you about a theatrical endeavor. I've... Excuse me. That's I would like man, to right? have a word. Jeremy. Yeah. Have a wager on Lizzie? Of course. To lose. Very good, sir. If I can have a moment, I don't think so. It's just a... Um, you know what would be better? I, okay. Yes, okay. of course. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I am mounting a plate at the asylum where I work. Mr. Fry, you Mr. have Fry to... Does not Would you to get your hands off of me? Ow, 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 I have Beatrice Price. You have Beatrice Price? Yes. On stage. All right, Isabel, uh, please give us the lines that describe Quick Quick's resurrection. Queequeg suddenly rallies and is half well within a day. He leaps to his feet, stretches his arms and legs, yawns, Ooh. and finds himself fit for a fight. He begins to use his coffin as a sea chest. Here they are. Oh. Dr. Calhoun, everyone. Yes. A distinguished guest. Beatrice. Let me look at you. You left me here? Beatrice, I tried. But you committed murder. We saved your life by declaring you insane. Mr. Fry, 
Good to see you, sir. Ah, oh. please don't let me interrupt. Continue. Oh, yes, we were just about to start rehearsing the Captain My Captain scene. Uh, Isabel, whenever you are ready. <laughs> the ship tears on, leaving such a furrow in the sea as when a plowshare churns up a field. Stand close to me, Starbuck. Let me look into a human eye. It is better than to gaze upon God. I can see my wife and child in thine eye. Captain, my captain, noble soul, grand old heart after all. What cruel, remorseless emperor commands me that against all natural longings I so keep pushing recklessly, making me ready to do what in mine own natural heart I does not dare. Is Ahab, Ahab? Is it I, God, or who that lifts this arm? Remarkable. Do you have any comments, uh, Mr. Fry? No, not at all. But I'd appreciate a moment alone with Miss Price. Well, however we can accommodate you. Would everyone except Beatrice please clear the room? I'd like you to meet Mrs. Isabel Wallace. She has all the makings of a true actress. Miss Wallace, I'm charmed. Yes, Mrs. Wallace has been doing Remarkable. I've, I've really been working with her. In Call me Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to join us? Doctor? Yes. We'll fetch you shortly. You, you wish for me to leave as well? Yes. Come, come, Calhoun. Let the artist have a moment. Yes, of course. Benjamin. Benjamin, please get a hold of yourself. Do you have any idea what this could mean? Listen, I admit I was skeptical at first, but Edward Fry, the famous theatrical impresario in the flesh, do you have any idea how many wealthy patrons, New York, Boston, he has them in his pocket? With his support, we could reach new donors, wealthy sponsors. Benjamin, please, it could lead to advanced equipment facilities. You must do everything you can to keep his interest. Do you hear me? It's been too long. God knows what they're getting up to in there. Benjamin, no! Benjamin! Dr. Calhoun. The women were just telling me all about you. Please, have a seat. What you are doing here is bold revolutionary. By accident, I suspect, as I doubt alone you had the vision to cast all the roles with women. However, this play has the potential to be sensual, provocative, transcendent even. With two radiant women at its core, more good fortune to you. So, I've decided to offer my patronage. That means an audience, publicity, and potential funding for future endeavors. Furthermore, I will host the performance at my own palace theater. Oh, Mr. Fry, that would 
<laughs> Naturally, there are some conditions. First, Beatrice will take over all staging, blocking, and choreography. Oh, uh, that sounds like you mean for her to direct the entire play. Yes, that's right. But we'll still use your fine script. The only reason Beatrice Price isn't recognized as one of the great directors of our time is that the world of theater is plagued by envy-ridden misogynists. Now, Mr. Fry, with all due respect, I'm not finished. Monomania seized him. Isn't that what Melville wrote about Ahab? You have lost your way, Dr. Calhoun. And now the only way to succeed is to turn over your play to surer hands. Dr. Withers, I trust there are no objections. None whatsoever. Great. Jeremy will come every day to ensure that things proceed as I've described. I'll expect regular reports. Mm. Good day, ladies. And good luck. You women, where is your loyalty? Transcendent, provocative, I wrote this! Surely Mr. Melville deserves some of the credit. You're still in, aren't you? I'm still in. Of course. That's my only way of seeing Rebecca. She sees me on stage with mad women. The play ends, she goes home, and I'm still trapped here. Well, this play could be our way out. We have to leave the grounds to perform. I'm orchestrating all the action. All eyes will be turned toward the stage. means of departure. But what about Rebecca? I can't leave her with him. No, we can figure that out too. I never told anyone where my husband put me here. Every year Tobias buys a brand new cane. He tests them on me. Always in places nobody sees. You wouldn't dare. Hit me in the face, you coward. Strike me where everyone can see. Stop it! No! Stop it! Do it! Do it! Hit me in the face! Do it! Your husband is.
just like mine was. We did what we had to do. Happens all too often. Artists, visionaries, die unknown. Ahab could be seen staring out at sea. Oh, what a lovely day. A fair day could not dawn upon the world. Here's a thought. What if Ahab had time to think? But Ahab never thinks. He only feels, feels, feels. To think would be audacity. God only has that right and privilege. Our poor hearts throb and our poor brains beat too much for that. There she blows! With a hump like a snow hill! This Moby Dick! Did none of you see it first? I saw it the same instant you did! Ready the ball! There she breaches! Wondrous phenomenon. Rising with utmost velocity from the furthest depths, the whale booms its entire bulk into the pure element of air. Do you feel brave, my hearties? Aye! Brave as fearless fire! Keep pulling! Lower those boats! In Jesus' name, no more of this. It is worse than devil's madness. Never wilt thou capture Moby Dick! Yea, I'll ten times girdle the unmeasured globe and dive straight through it, but I'll slay him yet! Shall we keep chasing this murderous fish till we be dragged to the infernal bottom of the sea? Some men die at ebb tide. Some at low water. Some at the fool of the flood. Shake hands with me, man! Oh, Captain, my Captain, noble heart, go not. Steady. Great. Okay, now my rowers on my count. It's to the one and two and one and right and yes, it's looking good, ladies. Are you ready, matron? The boats dart forward to attack, all paddles plying with rippling swiftness. Look out! Keep that keenest eye on the boat and mark well the whale. They're nearing their foe. The entire dazzling hump is distinctly visible and the glistening shadow of the broad, milky forehead of the unsuspecting prey. And nice, not perfect, but maybe we can use that. I like it. And um, Mr. Starbuck, if you please. Through the serene, tranquil, tropical sea, the glorious white whale moves Stop! Up. What are you doing? 
Those are Ishmael's lines. Why Starbuck telling it? Ishmael is busy on a whaling boat. Mr. Starbuck is standing on the Pequod watching. It makes sense. Well, I suggested you, you, you choreographed the action. He didn't say you could rewrite my, my script and, and massacre Melville. The script is set. Matron Stokes. I think it's a huge improvement. Please, sir. Why don't you have a seat and allow the ladies to work, huh? Through the serene tranquillities of the tropical sea, the glorified white whale moves on. Beautiful, slow, graceful. I love it, very feminine. This is a travesty. The whale is male. The sailors are male. There is no room in the story for femininity. You are destroying everything. Sir! I should hate to report to Mr. Fry that you held up rehearsals. Thank you. More lines for me? Okay, uh, from the beginning, everyone. I have news from Mr. Fry. One of his vessels will be sailing from New Bedford soon. He has delayed its departure. Yeah. Um, okay, everybody ready? We open in three days. From the top! They come expecting a freak show! But we shall show them a theatrical spectacle. A grand adventure. We have weathered many storms together. Our voyage beset with perils from within and without. But we have persevered! A dead whale of stone. A dead whale or a stone boat? Yes, Doctor, we have it. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Okay, let's get you all backstage. He's the maddest one out of all of us. Oh, Isabella. If I may. I know it's been rocky between us of late. But I, I, I think we had something special. And I'd like to get back to that when this is over. So, for my next production, I want you to be my Cleopatra. Okay. Uh. Please, please take your seats. <laughs> oh, there you are, Calhoun. This is amazing. It's great to have you. Thank you. Please, take your seats. Yes, yes. Everything is arranged. I don't want to hear another word out of that pretty mouth until I hear you say, call me Ishmael. Yes? Hello, young lady. Is this your first time in the theater? Yes, sir. We do not frequent these types of events. We're church-going folk. Oh. Well, the theater is my church. It's like magic. We'll see. Oh my God, what is this that shoots through me? Oh, my past has somehow grown dim. Is my journey's end coming? The 
grand god reveals himself! I reach a last to the sun, Moby Dick. Thy hour and thy harpoon are at hand. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. From hell's heart, I stab at thee! The spear is darted. Ahab's line runs foul and is caught around his neck. The whale wheels around, bears down on the Pequod's advancing prow. All is set. Mr. Fry's carriage awaits in the back alley. I'm gonna go check it in the back again. Don't you guys get down? Huh? Don't you know? They all think you're mad. You'll never leave. No, no, no. You're gonna stay filled with me until you die. Let go of her! The whale, my God, stand by me now! Water pours through the breach in our side. We are doomed. I did it. I did it. You can still go. Isabel, help me. Isabel, grab his leg. Okay. Arms on three. Okay. Ready? One, two. the play. Isabel, if you don't go now, they'll know something's wrong. The drama is done. Why then does one step forth? Because one did survive the wreck. All the crew were carried Sorry. out of sight to the depths of the Go. ocean, Go. floating on the margin. And in sight of the wreck, I was slowly drawn towards the vortex. Queequeg's coffin, I grasped onto it and was buoyed up by that coffin for one day and one night. On the second day, a sail drew near and picked me up at last. Then the great shroud of the sea rolled on. As it has rolled on for 5,000 years. Enjoy your money. You earned it.
Mother! Mother! Girl, be with your mother. I got to die on stage. Where are we going, Mother? Out to sea. Like the men in the play. Will there be a whale? I doubt it. Everyone says you're mad. Are you? Look at me. When everyone says something, it doesn't always make it true. I don't think you're mad. 